Today we have two more heat sinks we're going to take a look at. And this first one is going to be, I think, really interesting because it kind of goes with something we've already looked at and you'll understand when we get into it. And that deals with heat pipes. This video is going to be the Acidity M.2 2280 SSD heat sink, double aluminum heat sink for PCI Express M.2 NVMe SSD with silicone thermal pad. That's a mouthful. And that's what we're going to do. The title, I'll make it a little bit shorter for the video. But uh, we might have a tendency to want to compare this with another heat sink we did that had three pipes. We'll save that for a separate video. This one is going to be about this one from Acidly that uses two heat pipes. But the way they describe it, and we'll look at it in the description, shows it as actually four heat pipes because the heat pipes underneath don't connect. Looking at the drawings on the left, you can see those heat pipes. They go up and they go down, but they don't connect. So it looks like there are two heat pipes, but by their description, there's actually four. What we need to know is, by their definition of actually being four, showing heat transferring left and right, instead of a, a continuity of through the circle, what kind of numbers are we actually going to see? And uh, that brings up another point. The description for this heat sink is somewhat vague. The, the specificity, as in the uh, W over MK rating, again, we have no idea about the thermal pad or the effectiveness of the whole unit combined. That number's not mentioned. And as we get further into this, with all the questions you guys have asked, I think that's relevant that we know that information. But as this plays out, remember, so what we're doing is we're going to look at the product and we're going to establish a baseline. And this is going to be, of the four things we've covered before, this is going to be an unboxing, an inspection, an installation, and a test. And once we achieve that test, look at those numbers, then later in another video where we do the summation, then we'll see how this all plays out. And by the way, this is Builder By. My name is Gil Boyd. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. So we need to see what we've got in the bag. And uh, apparently, Amazon has figured out a less expensive way to package things. Curious. Never seen a package like this one. And we've got, aha, a Siddeley, another one we'll take a look at, and a pad we're going to look at. That kind of gives you an idea of a shadow of things to come. What caught my eye about this unit was the fact that it used heat pipes. It didn't have a whole lot of reviews, but uh, looking at the uh, technology that they have, and nothing about the description, but everything as they have it listed on Amazon with the pictures, which I think are the most informative that's what brought us to the point where we need to take a look at this. Let's do an unboxing. The box is sealed. I appreciate that. I don't know why that's so hard for vendors to seal a box. Seems like our more expensive components, like a lot of our motherboards, are not sealed. And details like this matter. The box on the bottom is folded, so it looks like somebody has uh, monkeyed with this because I can see where there's a fold here, and I want us to make note of that. Or somebody could have taken this out of the box backwards. See that crease right there? I want to point that out. So I've cut the tape on the top, but we're going to pull it out by the top. But based on the bottom, I think someone's already had this out of the box. Hope I'm wrong. Nice. It's a different kind of packaging. Wrapped in a little foam tube, a little screwdriver with a protective cap on the tip, and we have instructions. Okay. So far, so good. Let's see. Now this tube is not sealed with tape or anything over it. It's just a round tube with a plastic top and a plastic bottom. It's loose. I'm going to set that aside and the screwdriver. Let's see what the manual says. It appears written in four, five, six languages. So we're going to focus on English. Insulation, features, let's focus on the package contents. One M.2 SSD heatsink, 10 thermal pads for memory chips, Pre-divided blue, one thermal pad for the SSD backside, single-sided gray, still no determination of the value, one PH00 screwdriver, screw set, and installation guide. Okay. Features, two layers of aluminum heat sink decks, four high-performance four-millimeter heat pipes, two high-end silicone thermal pads, still no WMK value, fits M.2 SSD and 2280 form factor. All these to reiterate, are in the 2280 form factor. Uh, just want to point that out. Product size and product weight, 120 grams. When we do the summation and we do an overview of all of them we've looked at, 
Uh, the weight is going to be relevant, but instead of getting some scales and weighing them, we're going to take the weight based on what they tell us. So we're not looking at just one of these, even though we're testing one, and we'll get into the system in a minute. But we're looking at possibly two because the dual M.2 NVMe PCI Express adapters, but we could be looking at four on a quad card because the less expensive quad cards don't have a heat sink, and they should. Uh, but a heat sink like this, can it work on a uh, dual card or a quad card? I don't know. I don't, I don't have a good feel for the weight yet. On a motherboard, as long as there's nothing on top of it, yeah. And uh, that's something we take into consideration with the next one after this one. So I just want to point that out. So moving on up, let's take a look. The M.2 SSD heatsink is the ultimate cooling solution heat management of a 2280 SSD. It features two layers of aluminum heatsink decks linked to four high-end 4mm heat pipes. Interesting. The heat pipes effectively transfer the heat from the M.2 SSD to both layers of the heat sink. High performance thermal pads applied onto both sides of the SSD for excellent heat dissipation. That's a key. 12 to 25 degrees Celsius drop is expected. Okay. Your memory will never be overheating again. NVMe and SATA in 2280 form factor are supported. And we focus on M.2 NVMe. We uh, don't get into M.2 SSD. That's a different topic. Since we're all about performance and heat's the issue on performance, M.2 NVMe SSD. Now for the numbers. The numbers we're looking at, and I have to read this, our hottest without a heat sink was 92 degrees, and our best temperature with the uh, other heat sink that had cooling pipes, that was 54 degrees. That was phenomenal. I was really impressed with that. But remember that had, if I remember correctly, we had three pads on that. It was uh, designed that way because of the way there was a lip that I'll, I'll get into more in the summation. Just remember there were three pads on that particular one. This one is uh, going to be a little bit different, and it's not fair to compare the two. We need to, we need to see what this is going to be. Anyway, our best temperature for three heat pipes was 54 degrees. So my curiosity will be, with two heat pipes, how is this going to perform? We're going to find out. So step one is installation. We have to separate the bottom layer. We have four screws. Number two, and this is the first one I've seen, where it shows divided heat pads. So we have a primary pad that goes above and below. Then we have secondary pads separate that go on the top of this one singular pad. So three layers. We'll see. And then, of course, the installation number three. First part of the inspection. Now let's look at the device. What do we have in this pretty little tube? I'll pull the top. Now the top, this was sealed. The bottom, and again, there's no tape on either end, but the bottom of the box is where it looked like it had been open from before. So because of that, I'm going to remove it from the bottom. I'm curious to see if this thing's been messed with or if that was the way they assembled the box. I don't know. But as I've said before, I know enough to know I need to know more. And the more I learn, the more I realize how little I know. Let's get this out. Now this looks like we are in a sealed bag. So I'm going to have to pull the cap off the other end and that way I can push it. I'm going to push it through the bottom because that's the way the box looked like it had been opened. This is what I want to find out. Now, will this bag be sealed? We're going to see. Okay, in the tube, we still have some screws and those fell out. So that's all in the tube. Okay, so far so good. So we have a tube, a couple of caps. That's the most unique packaging I've seen yet. Somebody spent a lot of time putting that together. Now the picture showed four screws. In this package I see two. Two screws here. And that almost looks like a standoff type screw. So if I can turn that up a little bit on edge. Yeah, that has a lip to it. That's as close as I can get. That screw has a, or that bushing has a lip to it. So we have that bushing, whatever that's for, may have something to do with the, uh, the way this thing assembles with the offset for the screw that attaches this to the motherboard. That's my, that's my speculation. We'll see. So much for the screws. I'll set those aside. Now the question is this little guy. This package appears to be intact. It has a seal on it, but it's not a, it's not like a hard factory seal. That would be easy to take off and remove. However, looking at the line, I don't think this has been messed with before. So, you know, anything that comes off of Amazon now, you've got to, got to, got to inspect it because you don't know if somebody else has messed with it. So a nice little bag. So this looks brand spanking new. I've got to tell you the drawing they have. Uh, let's take a look at that again. The drawing just doesn't do this thing justice. You get an idea what that looks like. And that's a drawing. That's not an actual picture. You know, they always say a picture's worth a thousand words, and uh, there's the proof. That's a nice piece of machining. Quite a bit of work involved. And I can see how the bottom 
We've got this bottom rim to take off. We have four screws, two on each side, and I can see how the heat pipes right through here do not join. So I get that, and as we inspect the top, I roll that around. That's nice. And I'll turn it around so we can read the label. But our installation, because the notch is down here on the right side where I've got the screw driver, so we'll have to turn it around that way. But to get out of the reflection, I'll tilt it just a little bit so you can see how that looks. And again, showing the screwdriver here in the middle, you can see that break. And up here at the top, you can see that break. That's a nice looking heat sink. Okay, so I'm going to take a look at the bottom now. Made in China. And this notch, of course, on the right side for orientation for the card and installation will have to be put to the left side this way. And a nice little screwdriver with a protective tip. What I want to find out, wow, that's little. Let's see if this is magnetized. Yes, it is. Nice. Somebody put a lot of thought into this. And there's our thermal pads. Once I loosened the screws, the thermal pads started sliding out the bottom. Okay. This is impressive. I had no idea when we got started doing these heat sinks that this was going to get so involved. But as you guys, you guys know as well as I do, this is a, this is a big deal. Even though it's uh, in the weeds and down the rabbit hole, this is really, really important stuff we're working on. But the more I get into it, the more fascinating it becomes. It's amazing. All this started from a question. And as we do this, it seems like one question with an answer leads to another question. So it's, uh, we're on a path of discovery. Okay. So we'll pull the bottom off of it. And there's our pads. Now that said, it was my understanding we had three pads. I see two, one for the bottom and one for the top. Okay. One for the bottom. And what I perceived is one right here is actually those two little ones right there. So I guess they did that drawing for clarity. So we have one on the bottom and actually one on the top. And no, I'm not going to cut it. Okay, down here we go. 10 thermal pads for the memory chips, pre-divided blue. Pre-divided, that's the key. So our, the expectation is that we will pre-divide those. My concern about cutting those up, and I, I guess I know this is a point for conjecture, but I just want to mention I'm aware of that. Yes, the controller needs to be at one temperature. Yes, the memory at another. Keep the controller cool. Let the memory get hot. However, we've got to maintain an equal amount of pressure. Otherwise, if the pressure's off, we're not going to get our best reading. So even though the pad is pre-divided, I'm going to leave the pad for continuity, for equalized pressure as we come down on that as one piece. So I just want to point that out in case somebody says something. I know you guys will. I love my subscribers. You guys are amazing. And as always, we say details matter. Gray pad on the bottom in the pan and the blue on the top. You know, the thermal conductivity rating would, would really, really help if they would tell us what this is. The W over MK value, because uh, obviously these pads are different, but I'd like to know what the rating is. Uh, without, without getting all into that, again, focusing on what's here. And the installation is going to consist of, right here, we're going to be using the Supermicro Dual M.2 NVMe PCI Express adapter. That's number one. Number two, this is going to be the WD Black SN850. Now, in the secondary position that we're not going to test on, we might do that in another video if you guys want, is on the Samsung 980 Pro. We know what kind of temperature we got on that. We do know that the WD Black, that little rascal runs hot. So that's the one we're going after. So let's get this assembled. Then we'll uh, take a look at the system. Then I'll give you the specs on the test system. I'll go through all that. Bottom tray. I like using a micro screwdriver that's got a flat blade on it. It's a little easier to uh, get an edge where I can peel and stick, keep that centered. First thing I'll do is I'm going to check for length so I know some idea what I'm working with. Eyeballing the notch. So notch being on the right side at the moment, which will be on the left when we do the installation, what I need to do is line up on the left side the pad and the heat sink, and that will clear right across here. So. I always like a dry run for components, so I kind of have some idea what I'm working with. I think it helps. I've got a little bit of a bend in that where I'm holding it with uh, three fingers on the right hand. So that gives me some legitimacy lengthwise. And knowing that I need to line this up in the tray on this end. Lined up. Looks good. See if we can come down center. Looks good. Lined up. Okay. And, and we clear. Good. Now I'm going to turn this around. I'm going to turn this around because this is the way we're going to be installing it. So the label you're going to see as you read it will be upside down when we're looking at it overhead, but it'll make sense. Okay, now we've got to get our memory installed. And remember, NVMe is non-volatile memory express. So when I say memory, an M.2 NVMe drive, one and the same. Kind of redundant, but uh, some people get used to one name, they're not used to the others, so when they hear only part of it. Anyway, 
clarity. Hope that helps. Now I want to protect these clear tops. And since there's not a bag that came with this, I'll put it back in the tube to make it easy to find in case I need it. Okay, now there's still a cover on here that I've got to take off, but I don't want to take it off because I want to look at the memory first. And the orientation of the card, I want to try to keep this in as tight as I can so you can get clarity on what we're looking at. I want to make certain I clear this connector. So you can see them here at the bottom right corner where my screwdriver's at. I'm looking at the connector edge and I'm lining up right across here. And I'm also looking over here on the left side when that memory comes down where this notch is going to sit. So we want to be sure we clear this connector on the right side, but we want to clear the attachment point on the left side. I want to point that out. I'll take this out of the card. And I'm just going to set it on top of this so I can kind of get an idea of an alignment. Again, I want to see how we're sitting. And I think that's why they allowed for the bushing in the package to accommodate for this offset, which would be that thickness that we're dealing with. We'll see, but I'm aware of it. And because of the way this is machined, we can look here. We clear the connector, which goes to this edge on the far right. And this comes all the way back. So this is a good dimension. And we're also going to be on top of the controller for the thermal pad. And on the left side, that notch has got to clear that memory. So that memory has to come forward and line up. So we're lined up on the left side, right to the edge. And then on the right side, we just clear that edge. So that's probably about a 32nd of an inch or maybe a 64th that we've got play. So that's going to be my point of alignment. So I have to have a point of reference. So I'll uh, move the M.2 NVMe drive over. And now I need to peel the uh, top layer off the gray pad. And again, with a flat blade screwdriver, we'll grab the edge of that and gingerly peel that up. And that stays pretty good. It's trying to peel up. So I'm going to take a finger to that and just push that down, rub it down, go at it again. Typically what happens when I do this, the pads seem to stretch a little bit. And because of that, I have a little bit of play on this end, but think what I'll do because of that stretch, this end where the notch is being the most crucial, I will instead peel from this end. So if the pad stretches, I won't have to reposition it. Nice thing about a thermal pad, and some of you have mentioned, I'll just say that uh, they help fill the gaps. Let's see how well that goes. You can see it pulls that whole pad up. And as it comes back down, wow, look how long it made that thing. So I'm still good on this end, but look how I stretched it. So I'm going to pick it up. Looks like we've got a pretty good fit there. Stretched out just a little bit. Now for the memory, we're lined up. Now for the thermal pad on top. And this time knowing what I'm dealing with on the length, I'm going to go ahead and peel both sides. Wow. Well, they weren't kidding about pre-cut. I didn't peel off so well. Okay. And for those of you that want to point out the label on the drive, yes, we would get a lower thermal conductivity rating. However, if I peel these labels off, I will not know who's on first. So I'm leaving those on, but I'm letting you know I'm aware of it. And since that comes apart in pieces, I have to peel those pads off individually. That will not come off in a sheet. They are that well cut. Didn't expect that. So that's a little tedious. I know that's supposed to be a feature, but I would prefer... And I will do that the way I did the bottom pad after doing the first two. It's safer to put that down as one piece to get the full 2280. You can see how much neater that is compared to what I did with the individual pads. And then gingerly peel that top sheet off. Now thermal pads are only supposed to be used once. And I'm surprised these vendors don't make allowances for how you can get thermal pads direct from them. Maybe they did, but I haven't seen it. So you can see kind of how that ended up. This is like building a model. So the best luck I had with that was peeling that off on one side, putting it down, and then peeling it up with that laying down. I get a more even distribution. Whereas the first two I did individually, I tore up the corner. And that is a crucial corner for heat because that right there is where the heat is. But I'm not starting over. We're going with this. But all of the pads, as far as I know, we have some pads we're going to test. I'm letting the cat out of the bag. That will, be, that will require cutting because of the size. But it's about the uh, thermal conductivity rating and I'll get into that in the summation. Okay we've got the uh, we got the first part of the sandwich. Let's see how this looks. Memory's in. Turn that back around. Pads are intact. Heat sink is going to go on and remember we have to line up the top with the bottom. Now I don't see any kind of uh, indentation or notation on this to give this a direction of left and right. There is no notch left or right in the heat sink. However if we go by the way the label was directing us this would be upside down. This is the way it came in the box with a notch on this end. However, if I have the luxury, even though I won't be able to see it once it's in, I'm going to install it this way. 
and let's see if it lines up. As I eyeball the screws, it'll line up either way. I don't see a problem with it. What I'm looking at here on the right, if you see my screwdriver, where the two metal edges are, that lines up. The screw holes line up that you can't see. And the metal here on the left also lines up. So I think we're good to go. So I'll have the label facing me. I'll drop that in and I should be able, and these screw holes are slightly elongated. So what I'm gonna do is apply pressure. That's important. Wow, that's quite a bit of pressure. And get those down lined up in the holes and that compression is gonna help fill in those gaps. That's the tightest I've had any heat sink yet. Maybe that's a shadow of things to come. We're gonna find out. So magnetic screwdriver and pressure with my thumb. And I am really giving that some force, pushing that down. Let's line that screw up. And I think based on the amount of pressure that's required to get that screw in, to maintain proper leverage, I'm not going from each end. I'm gonna go from each side so I can maintain an equal pressure. So you can see where that is naturally. I give that a good push, push that down in there. And that's quite a, that's quite a push I'm putting on there. Okay, that screw is in. We're just in, remember they're that close. I had to push that much just to get them in because there's more room to push down further, but there's not more room because of the drive. And I mention this because remember this drive is single sided. If this were a double sided drive, that might be a problem. So those two are in. Now, because I'm uh, better with my manual dexterity in my right hand, let's turn this around so I can keep the strength in my left hand. And you get an idea of how far that's got to come down. So I'll get one of my screws. Glad that's magnetized. That almost needs a clamp. Okay, get it where it needs to be. And now we'll secure it. I've never had one this tight. Unreal. And I'm just getting it in, not all the way. And now for the other side. Get the screw ready. And I've got a pretty good grip in my hands, but it's taking everything I've got to push that down, to compress that pad, so that screw will clear. Wow. I'm telling you this because you might have to use a clamp to get that kind of pressure to hold that. That's, that's that much pressure. I had to use both hands to get down there and then hold it. So now I'll secure the screws. Interesting. So I would not use this with double-sided memory, but with single-sided, we're good to go. Those two tightened down. Turn that over. Those two brought home, tightened down. Looks good. Now the question of weight. That's a lot lighter, the way they've designed this with two heat pipes versus the weight of the other one, the Sabrent, with three heat pipes. I could see two of these on a card, four. I could see four of these on a card. The Sabrent, no way I'd put four of those on a card. Two on a card, maybe. But I could see four of these on a card based on weight. Let's see what kind of results we get. Let's get this mounted. Now the question is going to be how that's going to uh, work because we have a nylon bushing here. Wow, check that out. That hole is machined large enough, if I can get a picture on this, where it fits right around that nylon bushing. I wouldn't have believed that if I hadn't seen it. That's as close as I can get for a picture. That fits right around that nylon bushing. Incredible. Okay, so we'll get the connector in. We're good to go. And drop this down, and we are right on that bushing. I had to pull it back just a tad it's that tight, but it fits. We have, we have contact there. I'll pull that up and show you. See, we're right in that little groove. That metal mount wraps around that nylon bushing, and we're right where we need to be to attach that, that little bit of a touch right there. Somebody really put some thought into this and uh, took things into consideration. They provided the stand-up screw if you needed it, which wouldn't work in our situation because they made the hole big enough where it clears that nylon bushing on the Super Micro Dual M.2 NVMe adapter. Fascinating. So all we need to do is set our pin. I can't get my finger in there, which means when I pull that pin out, I'll probably have to use the bent needle nose pliers to do it. Damn, we're in. And like Flint. Okay. Well, there's no way a vendor could ever show you stuff like this. Let's see how we clear right here. We're good. We clear that one chip on the card and we've got a wrap around. And even though these holes are elongated, I had to push them down with quite a bit of force just to get those screws started. But to reiterate, it was the leverage like of a gate, so of a flat surface by, by having a pivot point. When I put those two in with pressure and then pivoted down, I put equal pressure bringing that down to get that attached. Point that out. Now for the test system and I'll go down the list. Starting over at the top, we're on the uh, Super Micro Dual M.2 NVMe PCI Express adapter. And the test drive we're working with is the WD Black SN850. As it came from the factory, we have not installed the firmware update to it yet. And the Acidly looks, looks great on there. This is the Gigabyte TRX40 Designare motherboard where we have two 16-lane slots. 
and two eight lane slots. We're going to be using the primary eight lane slot that's already bifurcated. So we have four lanes bifurcated in the BIOS for each one of the two drives that are going to be in that slot. That's an eight lane slot. The two 16 lane slots on the primary is the Gigabyte Aorus M.2 NVMe PCI Express quad adapter. And in the second 16 lane slot, we have the EVGA RTX 2080 Ti that's two slots wide. And in the second eight lane slot, which is also the last slot on the motherboard, we're using the Gigabyte Titan Ridge Thunderbolt 3 PCI Express adapter that only uses four lanes. And due to resource allocation, those other four lanes we cannot reallocate. We can allocate lanes within a slot, but we cannot on this motherboard reallocate PCI Express lanes to other activities. Some motherboards have that where features are shared, but this is what's called dedicated resources on a high-end desktop. Installation should go pretty quick and simple. And the nice thing about this, because we're using this particular slot, we actually on the case, as it looks at slots, we have a slot in between this slot. One on the left side, one on the right side. And the nice thing about this, because of the clearance of this other slot, we are right up next to the video card. And I mean, we are that close. Now it's hard to tell from where you're looking, but I've probably got enough space right there to slide about maybe four sheets of paper through there. But if you'll notice, this video card has a back plane on it, which helps stiffen the card, which is probably about an eighth of an inch thick. And that back plane takes up some of the space going that way. So even though we're tight, we're good. If you'll notice here, I've got, I haven't tightened it down yet, but I've got wiggle room. So we're up against it, like I said, about maybe the thickness of four sheets of paper, but we're clear. We're good. And we should also have a good flow of heat around this. Now, some of you have mentioned, I'm not going to get into some of that stuff. We'll get into that in the summation, but we're trying to keep everything as apples and apples. And I just want to describe for those that don't see any of the heat sinks, you need to because this, this is wild. And I'm really eager to see what this is going to do. In the slot and secure. So now we need to plug it in. Turn it on. Energize. System's powering up. Three things we can be aware of. One, we have power. We see the video card light up. Number two, we can see the postcodes up here where my thumb is at the top left. And you can't see it where I'm pointing, but on the top right, I have a PC speaker in here. So when we get through post, power on self-test, we'll go past the BIOS right into Windows since bifurcation's already been done. And we need to identify the drives, who's on first. Then we're going to run the two tests and we'll look at Heat sensors on one side, speed test on the other, and we'll establish that information. Windows flag E, this PC, the WD Black SN850 is D drive. That's a label on the drive, and that's on the uh, Super Micro card. And the secondary drive that we can also see the heat sensors on, actually two thermistors will be the Samsung 980 Pro. Using hardware info, sensors only, and now that we're able to have telemetry, all we want to see are those two drives, and we're going to focus on the WD. The boot drive is a Seagate Fire CUDA 520, and that's on the motherboard on the primary connector to the CPU. There's the Samsung 980 Pro running at 36 degrees. Two thermistors on there, drive temperature 1 and drive temperature 2. 36 degrees, that's probably on the controller, and the 42 degrees is probably on the memory. And we're going to focus on this controller where we look at current, minimum, maximum, and average. And right now on the WD Black SN850, we are at 33 degrees, it started at 32. This was a cold boot, the system's been off, so no heat, this is a perfect place to start. And uh, now the next part. We're gonna establish that by running Crystal Disk Mark. We're on the D drive, which is a one terabyte drive. We're using a one gigabyte test file, and we're gonna test all. Now the first number we're gonna establish that we'll see on the reads will be that the drive specification and the card specification give us the numbers we're looking for. Now this is a PCI Express 4.0 second generation drive capable of 7,000 megabytes. We achieve that with the drive, we achieve that with the card. Remember the specs on this card is PCI Express 3.0. However, we have PCI Express 4.0 drive, both of them, both of them are second generation. Now the other temperature we need to look at as we go through this, look at our current, I'll highlight, we're at 41 degrees. We won't achieve our maximum temperature until we go on the right, on the right, the second number. When we get to that second number, that's when we have the most heat. And when the test is complete, we'll take a look and compare. Test is complete, that is absolutely unreal. If you look at the specs, look at that. The current is 43 degrees, the minimum was 32, our maximum was 48 degrees. That blows me away. 48 degrees? The best we got with the other one, the Sabrent, with three heat pipes, came in at 54 degrees. And we got 48, 
and we haven't even done anything about the thermal pads yet. Wow. So I don't know about you guys, but that blows me away. I got to tell you, we got one more we're going to look at. I don't know how it can beat that. I did not expect that. My goal for this was that it would maybe come close, but to exceed it, um, I, I'm blown away. This, um, wow, that's all I can say. So I want to thank you guys for watching. This is Builder by. My name's Gil Boyd. We're on to the next video. We're out.